In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare for these holy and sacred mysteries, let us pause, calling to mind our sins. And so we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Now, my God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Enable us, we pray, Almighty God, to proclaim the power of the risen Lord, that we who have received the pledge of his gift may come to possess all he gives when it is fully revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was one of uh, was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Thus Joseph also named by the apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite, a Cypriot by birth, sold a piece of property that he owned, then brought the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is king. He He is is robed robed in majesty. majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord Lord is is king. king. He He is is robed robed in majesty. And he has made the world firm not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old. From everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord Lord is is king. king. He He is is robed robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The The Lord Lord is is king. king. He He is is robed robed in in majesty. majesty. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The 
the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can this happen? Jesus answered and said to him, you are the teacher of Israel, and you do not understand this? Amen, amen, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but your people do not accept our testimony. I tell you about earthly things, and you do not believe. How will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We, sit, we stand here in the afterglow of Easter week and the, the, that octave of Easter. And we are reminded of what we celebrated as we gathered around the Easter fire, which was built out here. And it was brought in here. And everything in here was dark. And then finally, from the Easter candle, all the candles were lit. And we start with all the things of the Old Testament that lead up to that. And then we have the, all the lights come on. There's the Gloria and everything. And the candles are lit here at the altar. And then we have the Epistle and then the Gospel. It is a reminder that out of the darkness of all that has gone before, the true light and life of the world, Jesus Christ has come among us. And he has given us the greatest of all gifts not just in his teachings and everything he's given to us and what he's given to us in the church and our sacraments and his word, but also the, very, the, the, the greatest of all gifts, which is death, death and resurrection on the cross. It is through that that you and I are redeemed, and we know that, it is that you and I have been changed. Once we are baptized, we enter into that very sacrament of death and resurrection. And we are changed. And with that, if we remain changed and live our lives in a different way, a way that is different than the rest of the world lives, then we have the hope and promise of everlasting life given to us. In today's first reading, which interestingly enough, how many of you have seen the movie The Mission? It's a wonderful movie. It's a story of our own church, uh, a very dark story of our own church, when um, a group of uh, people that lived in, below the falls and above the falls were, uh, in uh, the falls at Iguazu, which is in the southern part of uh, the hemisphere and outside, it's, it's in the, the, southern, the, the southernmost continent down there. And so they come to understand through the, uh, the perseverance of the Jesuits that there is a God, a God greater than their own king. And even though it's taken a while for them to understand, because the beginning of the movie, you see this, this cross uh, that was made, uh, and the first Jesuit is on that cross going down the falls. But they continue to persevere, and finally they come to understand. But there is a problem between two different companies. There's Portugal, and I can't remember the other country, but there's two countries, and they're vying for 
that island because the natives that live at this place, that live, that live on this, this place, they are people that they use as servants. And they treat as nothing more than people that are subservient of them. They're like animals to them that serve their purpose. And so they send out a prelate, which is a cardinal, to basically check on everything. And as he's strolling through, by this time, the mission has grown. And they are making musical instruments. They've learned to make musical instruments, and they are selling them, and they share in the profits. And as this prelate walks, well, yes, yes, there's a splinter group, and then he talks about somewhere where that does, does that. He says, your grace it is mentioned in sacred scripture. Oh, oh, yes, of course. And of course, uh, unfortunately, he politically errs on the side of the people who want to use these, these human beings as slaves a dark part in our own history. And it's a true story. Yes, they've taken some, uh, some liberties with it, but it is based on a true story. If you have the opportunity uh, to watch this movie, it is a wonderful movie. It's a story of redemption uh, by one of the people who actually used to track down these, these, uh, these human beings for slavery that eventually has to climb this mountain with his armor of his previous life when he finally gets to the top those very people that they're trying to track down this for slavery they cut him free from his armor and he has this this new life and he enters in to the beginning of his novitiate as a jesuit you and i in our own life here at the catholic church and in our own parish of saint john the baptist we are generous in what we give for the Samaritan house. We are generous in what we give to uh, Catholic charities. But we also have to, there's that balance, you know, be what we believe here in the United States and what the church believes. We have to be generous with what's given to us because let's face it, we cannot take it with us when we die. Um, and, uh, and so to be generous with what we have and to not be clingy about what we have to the point where um, it's, we're wrapped up in materialism. Um, now, at the other extreme, there's people that, that believe in communism. Now, communism, in some aspects, is not necessarily bad, but communism usually goes bad because there's people at the top who usually have control of everything and have more money than anybody else that's part of this group. Same is true with socialism. So you and I in the Catholic Church have to find a way to be generous with what God has given us and always remember that anything that we do have, we can't take it with us. And eventually we have to give it away to somebody because it's not going to go with us. I do suggest to families to have a gathering of some sort and to inventory the house and to at some point in time as we get to that certain age where we are closing in to the next step where we go hopefully to eternal life with our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ to where so there will not be arguing among our children or our friends that they know in advance by either the, the, the luck of the draw of a card or whatever what they are going to have coming to them. Families that get along famously, sadly, will have the, the, the most horrible arguments over things after their parents die. So to have some kind of plan put in place that before that ever happens, it's already taken care of, and a portion of it's going to be dispersed to the Catholic Church or to some sort of charity, and the rest of it is going to be already laid out and everybody knows already what they're going to get. That way, the family that you love so dear, that all of us love so dear, will not end up in argument, but overall everything's already taken care of so that there will be no argument and the love that's already been shared will continue to go on. These are the things sometimes we, you and I have to do because as human beings, sometimes it's, it's, it's uncanny 
tell we'll get so focused on a particular thing and we don't want anybody else to have it. Um, so today, as we talk about what we have as gift, we must be generous with what God has given, but at the same time, make sure for those who want something from our family, that they will receive it as gift and not look with greedy eyes to what other someone else might have. So today we remember who we are called to be in Jesus Christ. We remember the gift that's been given to us in his death and resurrection. But we also are reminded of the freedom that that gives us too. To let loose of things that sometimes bind us and to be grateful for those things that bind us to Christ. As one body, let us present our petitions to the Father, confident in his loving care for us. For the church throughout the world, may God bestow unity among all her peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may God's unlimited fairness and mercy be a guide for all their actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have suffered great losses, May they be restored to wholeness through the unbound generosity of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us here, may the blessings of God that God has given us bear good fruit in our life, lived testimony to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of everyone gathered here, especially for Melinda and Jay Boswell, for whom this vast is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all who have died. May they welcome to the joy of the eternal banquet in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all those prayers offered for the blessed sacrament and adoration, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Hear our prayers and grant that what will bring us closer to you. We ask this to your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. How many extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion do we have? Three. Oh, good. Perfect. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we receive this gift of bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received this gift of wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, 
so that the renew constantly at work with the renewal constantly at work within us may be cause for our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. O oh Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you, let more laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together with the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles, our beloved patrons of this place, St. John the Baptist, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, blessed Stanley Rother, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Body of Christ. As we travel, body of Christ. Amen. 
life, Christ. By Christ. By Christ. Christ. By 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 Christ. Christ. By Christ. By Christ. By Christ. By Christ. By Christ, by Christ, by Christ, by Christ.
our communion antiphon, the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, so enter into his glory, alleluia. While you're waiting through all this purification, let us uh, pray to give a prayer, uh, St. Michael the Archangel prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May every blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go forth proclaiming the gospel by your lives. Thanks be to God. One bread, one body, one Lord.